What's up, dudes? Welcome back to another episode of Ramas Men's Team. Uh, pretty simple. We are a group of guys helping each other make progress towards each other's goals. If you're new to the channel, awesome and welcome. If you want to help support the channel and join our pro team, head over to ramasteam.com pro, where you can contribute to us on a donation basis. We also give you access to exclusive content, mastermind groups, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, hope you enjoy this episode and we'll see you on the team. Mr. Ray, what's up, brother? Hello, Wes. I'm experimenting with a kind of like a Gotham Dark Knight kind of uh, vibe for the podcast. Are you Bruce Wayne or are you Bane? <laughs> I hope uh, I hope I'm Bruce Wayne, but uh, I wake up. I w- some mornings I wake up feeling like Bane, right? Dude, Bane's a badass character, man. To be honest, dude, I haven't seen that. Um, that is that version like that i haven't seen like the third christopher nolan movie yeah uh with bane as the bad guy oh dude it's Um, outstanding oh yeah okay yeah my favorite line from that movie was batman tried to like turn off the lights he pulled some sort of like fancy trick like you know and cut the electricity or whatever and bane's response was you know uh basically you know you think I'm scared of the dark. You adopted the darkness. I was born in it. That was awesome. Yeah. Oh, for phenomenal. Sure, I, knew, I could see you just getting electrified by, oh, yeah. by a line like that. Right. I used to do man movie Mondays. I might bring them back. In fact, on my calendar this Sunday was to do my annual watching of the movie 300. Um, I need to bring back man movie Mondays, like movies that like super motivate me. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so let's hop into it. Same. Same, yeah, I've been, uh, like, uh, yeah, I'm getting a bit of pushback from my wife on all the man manning up I'm doing, you know, like the working out, the eating lots of meat, the going to church, the being, like, strict. Um, and I think I might, I mean, I might have to add, I mean, like, I might have to add Man Movie Monday. <laughs> Even though I know what her, I know what her, um, I know what her reaction might be, you know, like that's usually night we watch Married at First Sight or whatever, you know, or Love is Blind. Um, but, uh, like, um, manning up, you know, like male, like acting like a man and a real man, like, like, you know what I mean? Not like not a selfish little man boy. But like really growing up, acting like a man, being a leader, uh, these are essential. This like it's it, that's my destiny, you know. These are essential, yeah. essential behaviors. Yeah, there was uh, Andrew Tate, and I'm not, I'm not a fan or not a fan of. I honestly don't know enough about him, but I know that you're not. You're not a. You're not a disciple of his. No, not by any stretch of the imagination. Only because I think most of the stuff that I've received were people sending stuff of his to me that were more of the like derogatory you know he's trying to provoke society um so so uh miguel thank you he said wes i think of you as the andrew tate for adults (laughs) thank you brother and miguel by the way i just responded to your note on discord absolutely dude you don't have to ask my permission for any of that um and miguel i think it was you said you're going to be on the dad meet podcast so hell yeah man i appreciate you even giving us a shout out so um, Miguel is going to be on the Dad Me podcast. I'm Amazing, pretty sure it was Miguel. Yeah, he's under a different username in uh, Discord. Let me check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So, um, anyway, so again, I don't have an opinion for or against Andrew Tate. I am a little slightly turned off by some of the things that I've heard him say that people have sent to me. Well, I know he's a he is a he is a, a radioactive member of the Manosphere, which I, and I would include our podcast here as part of that, right? Um, Mm -hmm. um, Men talking to men, uh, promoting healthy male behavior, but he's, he's one of the more, more like Joe Rogan, I guess, you know, but he's more, he's one of the more radioactive ones, Andrew Tate, right? I suppose it's because of some accusations of misogyny have been leveled against him or something. Yeah. And I think, I mean, from what I've heard and seen, 
some of the things he've said he has said are pretty extreme. I also imagine he straddles the line almost like a, a Trump straddles the line where he plays part time comedian. So that yes. way, when you call him on it, it's like, dude, I, like, obviously, I was joking about that. I wasn't really telling you guys to drink bleach. It's like, well, that wasn't so obvious when you were saying, you know, um, right. Or Alex right. Jones, the way Alex Jones carries on. But when he's called to account, he says it's performative. Yep, exactly. So with that being said, I do like one of the terms that Andrew Tate used in his recent Pierce Morgan um, interview. Which, as you can imagine, I'd imagine during that, like when you're being called out, you're like he's more on, on a better behavior type of situation. Um, and he used the words traditional masculinity, which I liked. You know, he's like, hey, it's just there's a whole there's a whole cohort of men who do want to subscribe to the traditional masculine role. Right. Want to be a leader, want to be a protector, want to be a, a hunter for their family, bring home resources, et cetera. So I can really get behind that that message. So I think, Ray, when I hear you talk about that. I'm taking my family to church. I'm showing discipline. I'm standing up for things. I'm protecting my family. I'm trying to earn money for my family. I would say what's wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Right. Because masculinity is like a, such a loaded word now, right. In the culture right now. Right. Because I guess we think of like male, male privilege, white male, white male privilege, the pushback against affirmative action and political correctness by white males, right? Like the the masculinity, like kind of has all these sucks in all these different pejoratives. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, and like, let's say, and I'm sure guys like Andrew Tate say explosive things and have explosive video titles in order to drive clicks because that's how they make their money. Right. So um, I know we don't subscribe to that. I know you don't subscribe to that. But um, there is, if there are, you know, if there are, if there's virtuous behavior in our message that overlaps with some of his message, um, I'm not going to change our message. Yeah, it's not without doubt. Right. Yeah. And then, Ray, I think you said you stumbled on a goal video over the weekend, was it? Fantastic video because um, Instagram is, you know, how I reach some of my audience with, um, selling art right but but um posting a painting and we've talked about this many times about or like a series of stories saying this is my new favorite artist next picture this is why i love it next picture check out the brushwork in this corner right and to educate and to to be a thought leader right and so i um there was a so i was on the treadmill for 15 minutes this morning as part of my um scorecard movement segment And uh, I just wanted to do a learning segment, right, and watch something um, constructive. So I'm like, well, why don't I brush up on my digital skills? Looked up YouTube, looked up YouTube videos um, about Instagram, right? And I came across one by a game that guy named Alex Hormozzi, mm-hmm. who you may be familiar with. Um, I wasn't, but I know he's been discussed on the pod before or in the in the Discord by some of the gentlemen. And the the um. It was a very misleading title. Like the title of the video, I'll post it to the Discord, was something like how to go from zero to infinity Instagram followers in 30 days, right? Or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, and so the video was fantastic. What he said is like, um, and it really reminded me of you and me and what we're doing here and, and Shaman, and, and, but also how we need to elevate it in 2023 as, as, you, as discussed mm-hmm. before. He said, he was doing the podcast for six years consistently one, two, three times a week. And, um, in, in a way that was out of his control, one of them went viral and he became a thought leader overnight, overnight. Mm. But what, yep. um, what was he doing? He was posting, like you said, like we, we meet uh, every Monday and every Friday, whether we have an audience of one or an audience of millions. Right. Because um, because it's uh, that's the behavior and, and also because it benefits the self so much. Right. Yep. So he said. Um, and so that was that was the discussion. The discussion wasn't about how to get a million or a billion Instagram followers. It was about the consistency of effort. That is what you can control. And what you can't control is when the success will come. He went into um, 
Atomic Habits, right? One of your favorite books. <laughs> yep. And quoted <laughs> Atomic Habits saying, winners, you might know this quote already, winners and losers want the same things, right? Or mm -hmm. every winner and every loser want the same things, right? Um, the nuance there is the winner focuses on the actions required to achieve the goal and the loser just focuses on the goal, right? So winners and losers, all every winner and loser has the same goal. And we can think about that as like being rich, having six pack abs, having a beautiful wife, you know, like whatever the clear goals are, um, it's the actions that are required uh, to make it happen that really distinguish those who achieve and those who don't. Oh, yeah, man. I, and I would add to it, if you don't mind, uh, one of the major things I got from that book, and Alex Ramos is a big fan of this as well, is the systems. So so what I we've talked about this a while ago, but there's basically three forms of movement when it comes to making progress. There's actions, uh, habits, and projects. Um, actions are singular units of movement. Projects are are groups of those uh, of those movements, and then habits are perpetual uh, movements of those groups. If that makes sense. Um, and I would put the way Atomic Habits talks about those is the systems are the habits. So having a systematic approach to things, which sounds so common, but it's not common practice. It sounds like common sense, but it's not common practice. Um, so for instance, this would be an example, or Alex Ramosi would be an example, showing up regardless of your feelings about something and consistently doing it. If anybody's ever had the pleasure of, of quote, rolling uh, or grappling with a black belt in jujitsu, it's unbelievable. Like it's, it's one of the coolest experiences to get your butt kicked by one of these people because it's they just consume your body inch by inch. They get wedges in behind your hips, behind your shoulders, et cetera, but it's inch by inch. There's nothing – there's no dramatic knockout in jiu-jitsu. So there's no like Jean-Claude Van Damme jumping, splits kicking two guys at the same time. Yeah, exactly. It is a systematic approach and – centimeter by centimeter forward progress. So I like that message in Alex. Oh, this is a message. I like it in jujitsu and I like it with, with what you're doing or what we are doing here. Hell yes. And a way, a good way to think about this that I often think about this is that concept is often not a new concept to most men, but the severity of the concept or the the profound nature of the concept is enormous so if you think about something like this um ray how far do you think and i think we've used this example before so if you don't mind just play along how far do you think you could throw a a stone like a, let's say a one inch stone how far do you think you could throw that uh, let's say 30 feet okay right so and how far do you think even the strongest man could throw a stone? 60 feet? Yeah, not, not much, you know, maybe, maybe 100% more than you could. Um, yeah, but if, but, yeah, but if he, right, but if he's, if he's 10 times stronger than me, he can't throw it 10 times as far, right? There's, exactly. there's kind of like um, diminishing returns or there's limits. Yep, exactly. It's almost like, a, like an, an asymptote in math, like, you know, you, you kind of reach this. this careful, floor careful this with the feeling. careful with the level nine words, Wes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, it, you, you kind of have this plateau. Um, versus, if I just sharpen that stone a little bit to the point where it, it has a peak and it looks like a, the tip of a spear, and then you put a, a you know a piece of wood on the back, so it, now it forms an arrow. And then if you add that arrow to a bow, right? I don't know if you've ever seen some of these high end bows, but like my uncle's a hunter. And he's got this bow that like the dude, pulley like something system, out of the matrix, dude, they're nuts. Like this bow and the pulley system. And then the, the carbon fiber, like frame, it's just insane. The materials, how far do you think even a novice could shoot that rock now? It's probably 500 feet. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's exponentially different. There's nothing about, in fact, in fact, I would say the strength borderline doesn't even matter as long as you get someone with like let's say average strength somebody like less let's less strong than you and i but can still no, strength that strength is um strength is is um like immaterial 
or, right? Oh, or yeah. Like, it, like the, the role of strength is, is, is drastically reduced with the right yeah. tools. Yeah, almost, almost if not neutralized. Yeah. Like, o- almost neutralized. So now we can send that same rock hundreds of feet, if not more than that. I mean, I don't know the exact number, but I'm going to imagine, like, you can send it over a football field, right? A novice. That's crazy. That has nothing to do with the strength of the male. It has to do with the strength of the system. So mm-hmm. even if you look at now, I'm going to use another uh, you know sort of a polarizing figure. What's that guy's name? He's supposed to be like the modern day playboy. He's got a big beard. Oh man, he was on Joe Rogan. That's how I heard of him. Dan Bilzerian. Yeah, that, do you know that guy? Sure. Yeah, yeah. He he um he takes pictures of himself looking rich. Right. That's his kind of. Yeah. That's his. That's his kind of special talent. Right. I don't know much about him. I just heard him on the Joe Rogan podcast. And I have to say, he's not a dummy, at least from what I heard. No, no. Like, he's he's very – yeah. So, like, Patty P says the guy whose entire life is a lie. Yes. And so – but but he's, he's very good at marketing himself as the, you know, whatever extreme outsized – personality that he yeah. that he's that he's claiming right? like the modern day hugh hefner who doesn't have to pay yeah. for it or something like that i think exactly. that was kind of exactly. his message um exactly. so and again i don't know kind of like an andrew take i don't i haven't spent a lot of time researching this guy but i do give him credit because he's not a dummy and one of the things that he said there when it came to to chasing women he's like here's the secret do 99 percent of the work up front so create the environment around you that attracts the women instead of going and chase. Now, that sounds – it's like, yeah, how obvious is that? It's like, but how common is it? I could tell you I don't have any friends who are, who are trying to chase – who are doing that, right? And you right. think about the degree to which he did it. Like he went out and rented a mansion and would rent DJs to come and talk and then do all of this marketing and like hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm just guessing, invested in the upfront – without zero approach, and then therefore it attracts. So it's investing in the system, front-loading the system, and then getting the results on the back end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, and then, um, right, and Patty's saying that can be applied to anything you healthily desire. Hell yeah. Yep. Um, right, and I was, I was going to add a caveat like that. Um, that, and that, that um, mantra can be applied to anything good or bad murdering hookers um eating healthy you know building a business whatever it might be Mm -hmm. right there's uh i don't know if you heard that music but as you (laughs) you yeah that's that's the lullaby chime when my (laughs) my prius shuts down (laughs) as you start talking about murdering hookers i don't know why it's the first example murdering hookers and it it sounded like like a psa like a public service That can be applied to anything. Murdering hookers. Da, 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 the more you know. It. <laughs> right. No, but I was yeah. just trying to say, like, like this Dan Balzerian and Andrew Tate. Like, I would. I mean, in my very li- as well in my very limited um, um, attention that I've given them, they're both guys who use these uh, techniques for rather odious results. Mm-hmm. is is my kind of impression but again um but again successful at getting attention and at getting clicks and attention is is the goal well then yes you have to acknowledge that they concede that they have succeeded at that yeah and a quick note on that i am not hating on them by any stretch of the imagination it's like right. hey man go get yours however things like that do disappoint me because i think one of our responsibilities as men is to lead each other, but we're all at our ages. We are intelligent enough to make a distinction between what's hyperbole and showmanship and what's not. Yeah. However, yeah, I do think that the younger generations, they're not, they don't have that skill. So if, if I would like to think that if a young male or a child, like a young boy were to stumble on the stuff that we're talking about that, yeah, we might curse every once in a while, but I don't think they'd be, led astray like oh bro no. go go and get the lamborghini first because that what that's what matters before like building a proper business do you know what right. i mean or only build right. a business so that you can get the lamborghini and like treat women right. like property like that that kind of stuff 
again, not hating on those individuals, but it is a shame to me. It's almost like it's almost like when a rapper makes it, but then he doesn't rap about his current life. He raps about like the old hood, but he and then he raps about the gold chains and everything. So then the young boy seeing that is like, okay, this is I, I have to sell drugs to get here. It's like, no, 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 no. Like that guy is now worth a hundred million dollars. He doesn't live like that. And by the way, nor do his children. He's not sending his kids back to the hood to earn their street cred. He's sending his kids to private school. He's sending his kids to whatever, right? Like, so yeah. I just wish more men would take the responsibility for not only themselves, but the, the younger generation. Yeah, well, through, I mean, through wisdom. And you know what, Wes, um, yes, we should lead, but like it's, it's through wisdom and time and trial and error do we learn to distinguish between the showmanship, the advertising, the clickbait, and the real message. Like, um, Alex Hormozzi's uh, video that I was referencing is a perfect example, right? Mm -hmm. Where the um, how to go from zero to infinity Instagram followers was the advertising clickbait showmanship part of it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't feel betrayed, or you know, the by the by his his actual message, right? I was, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm even more pumped up about the guy, given that his um, actual message was do the work, be consistent, these kind of like, um, these kind of behaviors that we want to reclaim for the traditional male, right? Right. Yeah. And so and um, I think, in any yeah, and I think sorry, it's just a matter of time. Like, I'm not sure, like you, yeah, wisdom, time and ex trial and error is how you learn to distinguish, like, right the 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 meat from the um like the, the the meatloaf from the bread or whatever yeah I, so i where i do get a little not concerned about this probably too strong and dramatic of a word but we've all seen the guy who is still dressing like eminem at 33 mm -hmm. years old Dude, because mm -hmm. he learned that, yes, that's a hierarchy that you can compete in when you're not doing well at school. It's like, a, well, it's the whole, like, yeah. I don't care. I'm too cool for that. I'm too cool for the traditional road to success. Well, it's for those kind of guys that I feel bad for. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's not their fault. It's that they had these almost anti-heroes to follow growing up, and they never sort of shook it, if that makes sense. Right. Right. And I can see it a lot. Yeah, now. Agreed. agreed. Um, higher, I guess hierarchies change as we mature and as we move up the status ladder. Right. And J J um, Peterson talks a lot about this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I liked what he, when I went to see him speak last week, I liked what he said. He's like, oh, before you go and try to change the hierarchies, how about you first compete in them and just assume you're not right? Right. So like you said earlier, the traditional masculine roles, what are those hierarchies? How do I get physically strong? Well, why is that to protect my family? Right. How do I earn money? Why is that to make make sure I can pay for my child's schooling so I can take care of my wife so I can do all of those things? Right. How do I get as mm -hmm. intelligent as possible so I can communicate throughout the world? These are traditional hierarchies that, yes, because they've been played for so long and our world is so sophisticated, they are hard. Of course, they're hard. You know, it's a lot easier to 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 skip those hierarchies to start dressing like a misfit or whatever you want to call it and and compete over there. Well, it's like, yeah, congratulations, because you're competing against people who are not playing. That's an amateur sport. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be able to win that game. But and no disrespect, but eventually you're going to find out that there's no fr there's no cheese down that tunnel. You know, <laughs> yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, I used to, I used to be a, like, I used to be a, like, uh, really, like a, like a, like an all-star, like a perennial all-star in the dressing like a freak um, competition. And the, the way I told myself, um, the way I, the, the, the story I told myself to migrate out of that is that, like, I want to kind of like shock rather than shock people from a mile away. Mm -hmm. I'd rather that they get shock them with my words or my mind, you know, rather than mm -hmm. just shocking them when they see me walking down the street. 
that was the lang- that was the kind of like um, inner dialogue that had to take place um, with me in order to graduate out of the like um, that particular hierarchy. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. I, I like, I want to be very clear here just in case, you know, anybody ever takes this wrong. I don't care how anyone dresses. It's Mm -hmm. the underlying intention. Are Mm -hmm. you dressing that way or are you acting that way? And this takes some real deep introspective analysis. Are you Mm -hmm. doing that because for some reason you, you don't feel worthy enough or capable enough to compete or to earn resources in the traditional sense. Hundred percent. That was, and, and I can empathize with that. Like that's it's not a judgment, but it's like, hey, before you go and do that, be real careful, because at some point you might want to grow a family, and if you're mm-hmm. delaying your at bats, you're not getting those reps in when you're younger. Well, you're going to have to make up for them. You know, one of the saddest conversations I've ever had was with my deceased best buddy Joey mm-hmm. two years ago. He, he showed up to a Christmas party for, with my family, and he was invited every year. Most years, he was in jail. Like, literally 11 out of the 15 years that we've invited him, he was, he was in jail. Um, he showed up, and he said, Wes, I don't know what to do with my life. He's like, because you think I'm 34. And I was like, no, I don't. You know, He's like, well, most people think I'm 34. He's like, but I'm really 16. Mm-hmm. He's like, he's like may, maybe 14. He's like, I've been using drugs. I've delayed my life. I, I don't have the skills. He's like, I hear adults talking around me. I can't participate. He's like, dude, I still yeah. listen to Tupac, right? Like, you know, yeah. no offense to Tupac, but he's like, that's, that's me. So if we as men delay our at-bats, you don't, you have to make those up. You can't just all of a sudden mm-hmm. step on the major league baseball field and hit homers. It's not possible. And I would even say, Real life is 10 times harder than that. Being able to hang in a conversation of an interview or a negotiation or a sense of conflict in a mature way is a very micro nuanced situation that if you don't prepare for every single day, you have no chance out there in the real world. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, but I, I agree with you, um, but slash and I would like to tell the Joey's of the world that it's also never too late to start. Absolutely. You know, there's, and then, and, um, the, like, you, you know what, it, when, if Joey tries to catch up, we call that being on the path of progress. Right. So there is nothing Absolutely. lost by, there's nothing lost by starting that maturity now. Oh, dude, I even would say you, you've just been starting at 34. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, yeah I, I would say you've disproportionately gained because on the other side, a lot of people, especially in America and developed world countries, a lot of people have grown up rich, even if they don't define themselves as rich. It's like, no, like if you go in right. developing world countries, you're for sure rich. So we've grown up blessed. We've gl- grown up um, like um, without need, right? That even like two yep. generate, we, we've grown up like with a, that even two generations ago. We, like uh, we've grown up in a level of comfort that would have seemed unimaginable to the people of the great depression era. Exactly. hundred percent. So I would argue if you're the Joey's of the world and I was in the same boat, I didn't have a, a chemical addictions, but I had like had other obstacles. You had other obstacles, right? We same. all have obstacles. However, the more severe, the ops, the more severe, the obstacle, the bigger, the battle scar. And you can use that like Joey, he was one inch away from being able to go on like a public speaking circuit to all high schools in America because he went through down to hell. And if you can do that and then come back up from it, absolutely. So yeah, guys listening to this, if that's you, I I would, you have a massive opportunity and -hmm. it's not like it's, if you have to make up ground, you don't have to make up day for day. But you do have to make up some sort of distance. But if you make up that small distance, there's so much reward on the other side. Right. That like the 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 storytelling in obstacles overcome. You know what I mean? The compelling the 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 compelling nature of that story, of that like the the, the appeal, the personal appeal of the um good morning. The uh <laughs> 
the yeah like and then the, and the wisdom and the like the wisdom the wisdom gained from getting through overcome yeah i mean how, how many speakers out there are are i was raised in wealth i was a trust fund baby i went to private school then i went to an ivy league then i worked at the bank because my father was the vp there you know like who's going to listen to that story basically mm-hmm. no because no basically no percentage wise can relate but everybody can relate to a joey because he's an extreme version of trials and tribulations and going down and it's vulnerability. Biblical, like biblical oh yeah right shakespearean biblical and it's uh, and again we can link this back to last week's um topic which was the the potence the power of the origin story mm-hmm. right his because his um is a mythical origin story oh dude right? well yeah he wouldn't mind me saying this um dude the stories that he would tell me like he he was telling this this was just the story the story that he told me wasn't out of how extreme it was it was just how recent it was right like two years mm-hmm. ago he's like oh last tuesday i was running from the cops and i had 30 pills on me literally and so i swallowed them all to get rid of the pills, right? He's like, because I learned my lesson before. If you throw them, that the cops can see because they have a spotlight on you. He's like, so I swallowed them yeah. all. That was his most recent story, right? You know, like, oh exactly. God. What kind of pills were they? Viagra? Dude, I, yeah, I, I have no clue. No clue. And he's like, I don't know how I didn't die. Whatever they were, they whatever they were, they, they're probably not designed to be consumed 30 at a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's like... And then him telling me story after story, like similar things. And that was just, that was on the lighthearted side, you know, and he was just laughing about it. Um, now, obviously that's not a laughable situation, but yeah, you could just imagine the belly of the beasts that he has been on in a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, right. The, yeah. So like, um, and just to tie it back to a message for the living, like again, um, we have guys in this group, or there are men out there who are in at a battle with addiction or recovered from addiction or are in unhealthy relationships, you know, or are a hundred or 200 pounds overweight. And like the, the, the power of like the obstacle overcome story is just like is undeniable i think of someone like jordan i know i talk about him i mean he's my like my new my new crush but like i talk about like (laughs) the the the, um the fact that jordan was overweight and unhealthy for most of his life is paradoxically a like a compelling selling feature of his fitness brand right what more compelling story could you get Mm mm-hmm Right. When you when you have a direct opposite of the current thing that you live in or the exact archetype that people are trying to inhabit and you were the exact opposite. That's why I was tra- telling Jordan right. not too long ago, dude, it doesn't matter that you don't have a master's degree in whatever kinesiology. Kinesiology. Or, yeah. Right. It doesn't matter. You actually did it. <laughs> Most majors in kinesiology would kill to have your story. In fact, I think there was one trainer who a couple of years ago went and gained like 100 pounds or something like that so that he could have the story of the weight loss journey something along those lines it's like right. jordan has that already in his pocket yeah that's that secret recipe and not the like not just the the credentials or the exams passed but like he knows the secret kind of like um roadmap for oh um, dude for what all the clients want the, the textbooks it's, uh, it's very similar to finance the textbooks do not tell you about the most uh, the emotional struggle Mm-hmm. The textbooks tell you, oh, okay, if you want to lose weight, right, here's what's about. Consume less than you burn. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. But what happens when everything in your life and your childhood tells you that you're not good enough, that it's not your DNA to do that, that it's not your place in the world? Where do the textbooks say that? That's in Jordan's story. Right. Or the comfort or like the, the, um, the, the comfort of the, the greasy food or the sugary food or the, the, the addiction or like, you know, or right or the. The self sabotage. Yep. And 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 overcoming all of the above. Yes. 
or the the friends and family that as soon as you lose 10 pounds they say whoa man you're getting super skinny even though you're still 275 pounds you know mm-hmm. so all mm-hmm. of those all of those things that are wrapped up and they're completely outside of the boundaries of the textbook so anyway i know we got to go but one thing i want to pose to the group is i had a friend challenge me um i know i'm just dropping this bomb on you guys but if you want to join me, I am doing a five-day fast starting today. Well, starting last night. Um, I do not recommend it. I have not researched it. I it literally, my friend just texted me, and I was like, "Yeah, man, hundred percent, let's do it." I am going through for the mental journey. This is not a recommendation. I don't know the health risks of this. Um, he seems to think that there's a lot of health benefits, but I will be doing that starting today. That is my intention. So, not eating another piece of food until Saturday morning. Yeah. Oh my God. R.I.P. Wes. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy yeah. birthday in heaven, King. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So just shouting be, it out there. I will not be joining you on this journey. Uh, Good. Yeah, but I, I, um, I, I have gained a little bit of weight from Halloween and Thea's birthday and whatnot. Um, or, or, although I'm still like, so I'm, I've peaked at again at 172. But that, that also might just be within the range of like, you know, um, the margin of error, right, of a couple of pounds. Yeah. Yeah, and you need to have that field goal post. I don't recommend yeah. anybody ever say, I need to be at this weight. Like have a healthy boundary of weight. And actually from my understanding, there's some studies that have come out. I forget what they call it, but it's basically like a dual set point. Like you have an upper limit set point to which if you go above that weight, your body will – basically turn off its hunger mechanism you'll start to get like sweats if you overeat like it, your your body sends signals of like not gaining more weight and then also that you have a lower boundary of of that mm-hmm. weight so once you reach like 165 pounds your body says i'm really hungry you have trouble sleeping etc so i think the game is to try to narrow that and to try to sit towards the lower end of that boundary and what do you hope to achieve on this fast or uh, to beat my what does your friend hope to achieve also Well, so I believe what the intention is, and I might be getting this word wrong. I think it's called apoptosis. I think that's what it's called, something like that, which is basically cells will die off and then to regenerate new, healthier cells. I think almost the way that I I envision it is like um, exfoliating the skin, like getting Mm -hmm. the dead skin off you to some sort of degree. And apparently the mechanism to do that with your with your body cells is i guess one way is fasting again i don't know what i'm talking about but this is just summarizing what he has said and what is your current weight this morning i was 173 so all you guys know what i am on friday wes are you telling me that i weigh less than you today yeah unfortunately it's outside of the god wes (laughs) what happened bro what happened uh, to your program? Well, so Saturday, so I'm really probably like 168. Um, I don't know. That's not what the scale said, dude. No, no, no. So, so no, I completely agree with you. So on oh, Friday, Saturday, amazing. yeah, Friday, Saturday, <laughs> and Sunday, I just went out and I ate a whole bunch of stuff, knowing that okay. I'm going to be doing my five day fast. And this is why this is why we take our health, our fitness, our diet and the scale so seriously is so that we can g- celebrate, right? We can go oh, all absolutely. I also, I went to, um, that, and that's what you taught me. Like I went out for dinner with an important colleague of Sarah's from the architecture world that could potentially lead to professional opportunities for me or for, her, for Sarah. And um, yeah, I had the appetizers. I had the main course. I had the dessert. So that yeah. explains why I've ballooned up to a weight less than yours. But um, <laughs> I'm still, but my program is still strong, and this I guess this is you recommitting to your program, and your bud. Oh, without your bud a doubt. Has, um, your buddy wants to lose weight, or does he want to also just um, experience the um, yeah the, the, the well, journey of the fact? He is doing it for what he is positioning as like, you know, almost like the supernatural health benefits, like that, that killing off of unhealthy cells to regenerate new healthy cells. That's why he's doing it. Um, And I am more doing it for the competition. And then also number two, for the mental challenge, I really want to strengthen my prefrontal cortex of like when I set goals to it's like, 
almost there's no other option. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, uh, Tony Robbins mentioned that in a video that Kaizen um, recommended, which is like he says he does a cold shower every morning so that he his body is trained that when it's time to get up and do something, we get up and do something. You know yeah. what I mean? And so I, I've that I hear echoes of that in you. And so, OK, so your goal is to fast for five days. Um, we'll get an update from you on Friday. Um, Sarah's out of town this week, so it's my Ooh, opportunity to man totally up. fast for five days. And I'm not going to fast for five days, but I will <laughs> do that jujitsu. I will do the jujitsu intro, intro class. That is the goal, the challenge that I'm setting to myself. And I will Hell text yeah, you. And I don't need the I don't need the pajamas or anything. Right? I can just show up. Yeah, I mean, most jujitsu places they either have ones that you can rent, or they can, they'll allow you to participate in your you know athleisure wear. Um, mm-hmm. for one class or, or something it's like that. It's cashmere, so I don't know if like the guy will slip right off me, right? <laughs> That's anyway, it. No. Okay, Wes, thank you, sir. Thank you, Jeff. Cheers, brother. Love my dog. Love you, brother. Thank you. Bye. Love you guys. Later.